Welcome to Retro Bassin. I'm just getting back to Texas after my little impromptu trip to Nashville, Tennessee, when I got to spend some time on the bank with realistic fishing. Today on Retro Bassin, we're going to be breaking down that little fishing trip, talk about some of the lures that I used, and also at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you what I really think about realistic fishing. Stick around. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, by the way, if this is your first time here at Retro Bassin and you like to fish it old school, talking about classic rods, reels, lures, and equipment from fishing days gone past, well, stick around, consider subscribing, and be sure to hit that bell icon. Otherwise, you won't know we post a new video just like this one. Collaborations are something I admittedly I don't do nearly enough of. There are some great fishing YouTubers around the country and honestly a lot of them right here in Texas. But for whatever reason when it comes time to uh, hooking up on the tube it's never really seemed to work out. But last week when I had a little impromptu trip out to Nashville, Tennessee I definitely reached out to Alex over at Realistic Fishing to see if he might happen to be on the bank that day. Well, Alex said that he was, we uh, coordinated a meeting spot, which unsurprisingly, perhaps, uh, to those that follow Realistic Fishing, was right in the parking lot of the local Academy Sports. Realistic, uh, true to Realistic Fashion, was in there looking for some deals on fishing tackle, and that is where we started our little journey around the many honey holes that Realistic has in and around Nashville. Now, in preparation for this trip, I really tried to dial it down. Uh, I tend to be a little bit of an overpacker when it comes to fishing excursions. And yeah, I remember a few trips down to Florida where I was bringing, I think, like three or four tackle boxes, probably six rods, and it just got too crazy to handle. So this time, I really did try to dial it in as much as possible, brought just two rods and reels, and a small handful of soft plastic baits. I did something I've never actually done on the channel before, and that is I put out a little survey on Retro Bassin, asking you guys which old school soft plastics I should fish with first. I wasn't really sure what kind of feedback we were gonna get from that survey, but I think we had over 500 respondents, and the choice for the allure that I should start with was pretty overwhelming. Of the five different lures that we had on there, the Berkeley Power Worm, I think pretty much had about half of the votes. This was a little four or five pack Power Worm, which if memory serves, I got from a Bass and Bud mail call. Now, I don't know that Berkeley changed the formula over the years or just that that old formula, as it sort of ages like a fine wine, changes a little bit. But to me, the smell of an OG Power Worm Compared to a new one, and they still offer the same basic 7-inch ribbon tail worm, but the smell is quite different. There's something about the old smell that brings me right on back to the mid-90s, and I was pretty excited that this bait was the number one vote getter. While I did start with the power worm, to be honest, it was a little bit of a tough day for me on the bank, falling realistic around, and I did not get my first fish on that power worm. The second vote getter and a lure that I was likewise pretty excited to throw was a discontinued bait from Cream Lures called the Pigtail. Now this is a bait that I picked up a year or two ago at Bacon's Tackle in Shreveport, Louisiana. Michael Bacon has a ton of OG plastic still available for sale and there were two different variations of that bait. There were some in a sort of clear version and some like this. This really nice translucent purple with metal flake. 
This is a pretty wild bait, and while I don't know for sure, uh, my suspicion that this lure actually has its roots in night lures as opposed to old school cream. A number of years ago, night lures purchased cream, and some of the wilder creations from the company definitely came from the night lures side of things. This is a pretty neat bait. The first two inches or so is just solid plastic. That's where I would put my hook in probably a two aught or smaller hook, to be honest. And the length of the bait, it's coiled, yes, but it's also hollow, which might be a little bit hard to appreciate on camera. This has a really nice action to it, and in the water, it coiled back Ah, almost sort of like a walking worm or a man's manipulator. Now the reason I think this might be a Night Lures invention is that this design is quite similar to a, another offering from them called the Tube Worm. The Tube Worm was a pretty cool old school bait from Night Lures. It featured a solid head and a long straight tube body. If I recall correctly, there's even an old school video on the YouTube of Jimmy Houston fishing with a tube worm. Well, lucky for us, the tube worm was recently reintroduced by Cream Lures and it is available pretty much everywhere. While those were the top two vote getters in my little retro bass and survey, unfortunately, I did not get a hit on either of those baits. So when it came time to choose number three, I pick the soft plastic that I personally have the most confidence in. Well, here is that bait and ooh, this is a neat old school soft plastic from Action Lures called the Breathing Worm. Now at first glance, this thing doesn't look too crazy. Probably a little six inch uh, curly tail ringworm style bait, but man, this thing is magic in the water. It does have a nice round head a ribbed body and oh this nice little curly tail but what is so cool about this bait are these little ridges this bait captures air as it falls into the water and when you work it slowly through grass it produces little air bubbles well this was the bait that i threw when we got to a spot that realistic calls skeletor park and i'm glad i did because i got my first bass of the day uh, and officially got off the skunk. Even though that first fish was a little bit of a dink, I could tell the realistic fishing breathed a sigh of relief when I caught it, and I know the feeling. I uh, recently had a few bass and buds out on the boat, a few, uh, we'll say high profile bass and buds that you guys will have to stay tuned to see, and it was a tough day on the water, and I can't tell you how stressed I was trying to at least get a fish on the line. So after we got the skunk off, all things were good on the bank, and we moved on to the final spot of the trip. We wrapped up the day at a, a private lake, which Realistic is a member of, and we had a good little flurry of action toward the end of the evening. Realistic caught some really nice bluegill, and I landed my nicest bass of the day, going back to the viewer's choice, lure number one, the OG Berkeley Power Worm. I've got to admit, it was pretty cool to get the feedback from you guys on which lures you wanted me to throw. So if that is something that you would like to see more of in the future on this channel, definitely drop a comment and let me know. Now on to the second part of the video where I share my honest feedback and thoughts on realistic fishing. I've got to be honest with you, when it comes to fishing content on YouTube, there are probably less than a dozen channels that I watch regularly. Unfortunately, when it comes to the YouTube fishing scene these days, it seems that a lot of channels are dedicated primarily to selling you tackle. Whether it's featuring a sponsored lore or a uh, secret tackle box of the month, it seems like 90% of their content is generated toward pushing product. And that is what initially drew me to realistic fishing. Alex from day number one has been very true to his vision of a fishing channel. No BS and no sponsors. The guy that you see on video is literally the guy that you are walking the bank with. And it is cool to see somebody fishing with the baits that they want to fish with as opposed to the baits they have to fish with. I'm sure Alex could have a sponsor or two by now, but 
Instead, he's chosen to remain loyal to the original vision of realistic fishing. And I think that you really have to respect that. And you also have to respect the fact that Alex knows what kind of content creator he is. He doesn't try to get outside of the box too often to be something that he is not. He is literally just showing you fishing in, well, the most realistic way possible. Which brings me to the next point about realistic fishing, and that is where he fishes. Alex took me on a tour of his honey holes in and around Nashville, Tennessee, and every single one of these places, with the exception of the final destination of the day, was one, a public park, and two, a boat ramp. We are talking about some very small waters, some very public waters, and some no doubt very pressured waters. This was not an easy day in a stocked farm pond by any means, and those are the kind of places that Alex fishes every day, putting out up to three videos a week. Now, he does have the benefit of knowing where every branch, log, and stone lies in those areas, but it was pretty wild to see him pull up to a spot, a small spot, that had probably maybe a dozen different casts that you could make, catch a fish or two, and then drive 20 or 30 minutes to another public body of water. This is not an easy way to create YouTube content, so hats off to Realistic Fishing for truly keeping it realistic on the places that he fishes. I'm sure you saw from our two different videos, Alex and I do a lot of things very differently. I am fishing with old school five foot six inch pistol grip rods and discontinued baits. Alex is fishing with some of the most cost effective fishing tackle that you can buy today. Of course, I'm walking around with a SLR camera on a tripod and Alex is fishing with a chest mount. So there were definitely a lot of differences and it was kind of fun and challenging at the same time to try to film two episodes together, one for his channel and one for mine. But despite all those differences, I think that the two of us have a lot of things in common and I think we were kind of talking about this on the bank a little bit, but boiled down, I think that the point of both realistic fishing and retro bassin is to keep fishing simple. Unfortunately, if you watch a lot of YouTube fishing these days, you might think that you need a bass boat that costs as much as a Porsche and electronics that probably costs more than my boat to be competitive and effective at catching those little green fish. In reality, fishing should be simple. It should be accessible to everybody. It should be something that you can go out there and do with either 30-year-old tackle or $30 setup like Realistic was using. And I think in that regard, both the spirit of his channel and mine are pretty similar. We did talk about it a little bit on the bank, but Alex is knocking on the door of 100,000 subscribers. And man, I can't think of a channel that is more deserving of that YouTube play button. So if you don't already subscribe to Realistic Fishing, do me a favor, head on over there, hit that subscribe button, and definitely give his videos a like, a comment, and let him know that old Retro sent you. And while we're on the subject of collaboration, now more than ever, while we're in a little transition phase on the channel, I would love to know what other YouTube fishermen you would like me to collaborate with. Of course, I've got some folks that are kind of in the hopper that I wanna do more with. Uh, I've got some live streams planned with Debo. I just need to kind of get my schedule uh, synced up with his. Clearly, I've got some on the water time planned with small water charters down in Florida, as well as my buddy Ted Lincoln, who I might see next week if all things go well up in Gainesville, Florida. And of course, we've got some old school Bass and Buds early subscribers to the channel, including my buddy Todd over at Bass and 101. And of course, Terry Battisti, who is now on the Big Bass podcast. But let me know if there's any other content creators out there, any other local fishermen you think would be good on the Retro Bass and Show. Honestly, to me, I don't care how many subscribers anybody has. And if there's somebody out there with 15 subscribers who, oh man, you think would have a good old time on the bank fishing old school, definitely hook me up. In the meantime, if you guys are looking for some more old school content, I click right here. Otherwise, I'll see you right back here, same time, same place. Until then, keep the carpet side up.
And <laughs> definitely, fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bastion.